Hi folks, I'm standing in the roomy, spacious Forbes 13 Plus. Miles of headroom, miles of space. Stick by us and watch how we set it up. Once you've found a good level spot to set up your caravan, you need to put the stabiliser legs down. First put on the handbrake and chock the wheels if necessary. Now, with your caravan, you'll get one of these. This is a brace for lowering the stabiliser legs. Simply grab the blue handle, pull it out, and lower the stabiliser leg down. Once down, push it until it locks into place. Now, we can put our brace in on the nut and wind our leg down. That'll keep your caravan nice and stable while you're walking around inside it. Be sure to do that at all four corners of your caravan. Don't overdo it with the stabiliser legs. Don't try and lift the whole weight of the caravan. They're not designed to do that. You'll end up breaking the shear pin. So get it nice and level and use the legs just to give it stability. Before we raise the roof, we need to undo the latches on all four corners of the roof that secure it to the caravan body. First, you remove the little linch pin out of the lock, undo the latch, then return it up like that so the triangle piece can't get caught on the lip. When raising the roof, we always start at the front. So lift the front up first, press it up and lock the little silver latch over the tab. Now we can raise the rear of the roof. Done. Setting up the rear fold out is easy. First, we need to drop the spare tyres out of the way. First step, remove the linch pins from the over centre latches and the locking pin. Now they're removed, I can undo the latches, remove the pin, and drop the spare tyre down. Gas struts do all the work for you. Repeat that for the other spare tyre. You'll see here, without the spare wheel in place, what we do to unlatch it. We take the linch pin out, push the latch over forward, and then pull it away as such so it's clear. With the pin at the base, undo the linch pin and remove that pin there. Now to open up the back, release these locks and the gas struts will do the work for you. To open the wing panels, press at the top of the handle, twist it and it opens easily. Now I need to release the two locks at the top of the bed panel and lower that down. For ease, I just step up onto the spare wheels. And gently lower that down into place. Now, I can grab hold of the handle and just pull the window section up. The gas struts assist making that very, very easy. Now, get these over centre latches locking the roof down on it. And now our bed end's set up. If you want to add a bit of security, you can put a padlock through these and that'll stop anyone opening this up while you're away from your caravan. Folding out the bed is a very easy process. This one, being a brand new demo, is still in the plastic, so it's here for demonstration purposes. Simply grab the end of the mattress and gently move the base of the mattress forward. And there we have it, the bed's laid out. Being permanently plumbed to the hot and cold water, the kitchen is really easy to set up, but you will need this, the support leg for the kitchen. So we'll put that there out of the way, open up our hatch, and we can pull the kitchen out. On one side, we have a pad bolt. If you raise the pad bolt, turn it 90 degrees, then raise it a bit further and turn it back, it will lock up out of the way. 
The release mechanism for the slide is this blue tab here on the right. Now, when we pull the kitchen out, we want to grab the kitchen from this upper handle, not this smaller handle down here. That is for the slide out tray. If you try and force the kitchen out with that, you'll end up breaking the little retainer tab. So don't do that. Grab it here and push the tab down and the kitchen will slide out easily. Grab your support leg, pop it in this little receiver hole underneath here, extend it down and take a little bit of weight off the kitchen and lock it into place. So simple. Now the covers for the kitchen are very easy. They're secured by a little rubber bungee cord that loops around a fitting here. Simply undo that, fold the top back, and the tray will sit back there. Pull the wing panels out, fold them around to the side, push them down and put them in their slots at the front. Do that and your wind brake's set up. The cover for the sink, same thing. Undo the little bungee cord, raise it back, push the cover back. That now becomes your dish rack. So we're all set to go, raise our tap up. Now we just need to connect the gas. When connecting the gas for the kitchen, make sure you do it before you actually turn the gas bottle on. Otherwise it makes it difficult to get the bayonet fitting in. Line up the little grooves on the side with the tabs inside the female section, push it in and give it a twist. That's now connected. Now we need to power up the caravan. So to activate all the 12 volt, simply go to the cupboard where the power board is, turn the knob to the right, and we've got 12 volt power. When setting up the hot water system, first thing you need to do is open the gas unit flue. So we open that up, take the trimmer cover off. Now we're ready to turn on our gas, flick on the hot water system and the water pump at the switch, and in no time at all, we'll have hot water. Now I'm gonna show you how to connect up the gas bottles. First, we remove the dust plug. Then, grab our gas connection and pop it in. First of all, make sure that the rubber seal, the O-ring there, is in good condition. There's no damage or, or fraying, so that needs to seal properly. Pop that in and turn it counterclockwise. Tighten it firmly, then we can turn our gas on. To start the hot water system, first we turn on the hot water switch and the water pump switch. Now we can go to the Truma switch and select what temperature we want and fire up the system. To start the Truma system, we have a three position switch here. The middle position is off. If we select up, that will give us 60 degrees. If we select down, that will give 70 degrees. Now to start it up, flick it and the unit will automatically ignite. If this is the first time you're using it or you've disconnected the gas, it may take some time for the gas to purge all the way to the hot water system. If it doesn't fire up, the red light will illuminate and tell you it's failed. So you simply switch it off, give it a moment and then start again and eventually the gas will make it to the system and ignite. Setting up the electric awning is easy. Simply switch on the power for the toilet and awning on the main board and flick the switch just inside the door. As the awning comes out, you can take out the legs that support it. As you do this, do it evenly. Pull them out gently Pull the hinge out at the end all the way and fold the leg down. Extend it down there using the cam lock and do the same on the other side.
When the awning gets to the end of its travel, it will switch itself off. Then you can decide whether you want to leave the legs down and peg them into the ground or attach them to the little white clips on the side of the caravan. If you choose to attach it to the side of the caravan, this is the little white clip you want to use. Raise the top up, put the foot in there and slide the top down on there. Extend the awning to where you want it and lock the cam lock in. That'll stay put, which is not a bad idea if it's a little bit breezy and you haven't got time to peg it down. How easy was that? It is absolutely simple to set up. For some information on tips and tricks to make caravanning easy, head across to our website and check out the Masterclass series.